This is, I, I keep saying it. The only thing that I can say is this is fucking crazy. That's really the only phrase that I have for this is this is fucking crazy. And it says you're making accusations without any data. Bro, imagine getting in a fight with your mom and you're like, mom, I feel like you're being kind of a bitch to me. And your mom's like, do you have any data to support that claim? Hello, once again, friends and enemies. I'm gonna go ahead and slap a warning on this guy again. We're gonna be talking about heavy stuff here. If that does not interest you, I invite you to make like a tree and get the fuck out. And before we get rolling, as per usual, please go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. And as per usual, you can catch me live on Twitch where I do all of this stuff unedited and unfiltered. Let's go ahead and dive back in. Let's go. Breaking news, a second Google Doc has struck the poppy. Mr. President, a second Google Doc has struck the poppy. So last week we went over, you know, we went over all the the essay allegations and there was a little bit in there where we hit on um, Poppy's kid, also known as Spawn, um, and a second Google Doc has dropped a second Google Doc has struck the poppy okay and this is this is a long boy okay this is 63 pages of logs okay and this is about the alleged alleged abuse of poppy to their child named spawn and it has come to my understanding now um, through my days of scraping the bottom of the barrel of the internet, that Spawn is not Poppy's biological child. So to my understanding, the timeline is that Poppy and this girl got married when the girl was pregnant and then had Spawn and then passed away. And Poppy took guardianship of the child. So it's not Poppy's biological child. So that has come to my attention. So we'll clarify that now because I misspoke and I said that it was Poppy's biological child. It is not. And in my opinion, that makes it a whole hell of a lot fucking worse. Before we begin, I do want one meme that I think is hilarious. Okay, so one meme. One meme that I think is very funny. White Forest actually ended up nuking Poppy's uh, website. Transgirltherapist.org or whatever the fuck it was. Has been nuked. Termination of White Leaf Services. And Poppy is like, what? What? Shocked Pikachu. Um, we don't have confirmation on why this was nuked. Don't really know. I would, um, I would imagine, I would imagine that it's because somebody was like, Hey, it was realistically the, the first Google doc of all of the logs that I'm sure, um, kind of resulted, um, in this nuke. And then additionally we have here. So we have some good old fashioned blackmail. We have some good old fashioned blackmail here. So this is at uh, Willow. If you want a truce with us, you get to ask for nothing. You will remove everything about us. Post that you took uh, an awkward situation and tried to frame a trans woman as a predator over it. And you will block and cease all interactions with the Suicide Squad and Noe Flake. You will also admit that you are one of the people that contacted Poppy's work and got her fired over lies, backlash, internet speculation. Lastly, you will contact Poppy's former employer and rescind your complaint. Only then will we not do a segment on you, your move. And to be clear, if we do a segment, everything comes out. This is an all or nothing, Twitter, Tumblr, everything. If we find anything anywhere or even as much as a like on Noe's post, deals off. So, casually doing blackmail, delete all your shit about me or I'm gonna fucking nuke you. Uh, we love that, we love that. That's not unhinged at all. Willow did end up deleting the allegation thread. Um, and if we recall, Willow's thread was about how Poppy exposed herself in an uncomfortable way uh, to Willow when Willow was staying with Poppy for a weekend. Uh, the Suicide Squad, how are people calling themselves and want to be taken seriously? They call the group of people that are like, quote unquote, harassing them. So people that are leaking the logs, people that are speaking out. So like uh, Noe and like Willow and all these people were and Gayfesh are like the Suicide Squad. Like these are the people that are attacking them. That's what they call them. Okay. Let's get cracking, everybody. Let's get cracking. I'm making this a nightmare. Roan wants to edit this second part, and I'm making this a nightmare by not just going. But sorry, Rowan. <clears throat> okay, let's begin. Let us begin. The second Google Doc has struck the poppy. The second Google Doc has struck the poppy. So this was dropped. Okay, this is from the 16th. Three days ago, this was dropped. So let's read. Xena and Poppy are abusive parents. Um, Z and P said that they didn't abuse their kid, that their kid abused them. They're lying and here's proof. 
Preface, I want to keep these points I want you to keep these points in mind as you read through this document. While there is not the abuse of a my while this is not the abuse of a minor, this is the abuse of a vulnerable person by people who claim parenthood over them. Poppy's child will be referred to as spawn for their privacy. Poppy is not spawn's biological parent, but a parent at the parenting them since birth and the death of their mother when they were around four years old. At the time, Spawn was significantly physically disabled without reliable transportation, isolated, searching for a job, and using their trust fund from their deceased mother to pay Poppy and Xena's rent. Poppy has said in her recent stream that Spawn hasn't been her child in her eyes for 10 years. This document doesn't even delve that far in the past. Spawn is 24. Pay attention to the power dynamics and the evidence provided below. This document is not the fullest extent of what Spawn has gone through. And then, of course, you know, your adequate warnings of we're going to be talking about shit that's not fun. Okay. <clears throat> so, Poppy on being a parent. So, this is uh, proof that this is her uh, Reddit account here. Um, it's called Cupulin Progress says, I know there's no checklist to prove that I'm valid, but it still feels really invalidating to not like them. My big, my big sister has two kids and I just find them annoying and really stressful. And that makes me feel like a guy, but I really don't want to be. Oh, and then she also says trans women here. Fuck having kids. Already did that once and it's way too much work. You're absolutely a girl and you can be selfish. It's totally cool. So this is Poppy saying fuck kids, essentially. So for this document, red sensors are Poppy, purple are Spawn, and green are Spawn's friends. So, okay. <clears throat> this doc contains a mixture of screenshots from group chat, Spawn private Discord server with a few of their friends, and some photos of paper notes left for Spawn. So, this is 3-20-23, batch number one, the housing assignment. So, this is a group chat with Xena, Poppy, and Spawn. So Zena says, Play, please stay on task. Rules at the bottom of the pages will be enforced. If you get to a section of the house where we need to move stuff, please let us know. FYI, all the trashes will definitely need to be emptied after chores. Poppy says, uh, Spawn, on the laundry basket outside of your room is instructions. Please read them thoroughly. We will be going over this tonight after work. The requirement for restoring your internet are on there. There are only two things that are relatively short but do require reflection. Thanks, Mom. And then Spawn says, I saw. So something to be mindful of is something that has been alleged uh, throughout this entire thing is that Poppy and Xena would restrict things from Spawn if Spawn did not adequately do housework or chores or meet their expectations or things like that. Um, some of the allegations that we looked at in the last document is that Poppy and Xena would actually restrict food from Spawn and that when Spawn moved out at the age of 24, Spawn actually weighed 80 pounds. Um, so the internet thing here is um, related to this. Um, this, of course, plays into the idea that they were constantly isolating Spawn um, from being able to contact other people. Um, and Poppy and Xena also say that they never restricted uh, Spawn's access to their hotspot or to Discord because apparently that's like how they would all communicate. Um, but nonetheless, that's kind of the context of this is that things were restricted from an adult child that was paying rent um, at an apartment for not doing chores, basically. So that's kind of where we're at. Yeah, the allegation is that they, they would restrict food. And there are some screenshots in here referring to the, the food stuff as well. So we'll get to that here shortly. So the internet was their only way of staying in touch with their friends. They were allowed to use mobile hotspot for them if their main internet got restricted, but that meant they only got 10 gigabytes per month. So these are the the packet that they're talking about here. The This is a packet that Poppy printed off for Spawn. It says, to Spawn, please read thoroughly. Requirements to get the internet back. One, please finish the housing assignment. Several pieces were not complete. Zena and I have gone through and highlighted the parts that were missing. The point of the assignment is to understand all the parts around renting. And mind you, this this is like an adult. This is an adult child. This isn't like a 13-year-old. This is like an adult fucking child that pays their bills at the apartment that they rent, okay? Two, we would like a brief, a brief write-up, one to three paragraphs explaining the specific issue that Zena, Zena spoke to you about. Specifically, the tendency to not fu not fully communicate information about jobs or chores and giving each of us different information. The issues around completing tests fully in any house rules discussed. See your journal. We would like an explanation as to your understanding of these issues, why it's a problem, and how you're going to work on fixing it. So they want her to write like an essay, or her, I should say them. We don't really know. So what Poppy wants is for them to write an essay on why they're not doing their fucking chores. An adult, by the way. A full-grown fucking adult that pays rent. Okay, <clears throat> add the following to your logs. Also say the following directions uh, to continue to use for your write-ups. Fix past logs and tasks with the needed information and complete every single requirement. Read each word. One, your resume must be made in a word and then save for a PDF when you're ready to hand it out. Do not put HTML, CSS if you don't have word. Uh, then let me know and I will get uh, you a program to use. 
So list the specific apartments that you're interested in and some information about why you're interested. Um, cost, utilities, pros, cons, company name, job title, blah, blah, blah. So this is just like a, a resume thing. Uh, this says clarification. We're looking for activities relating to furthering independence and life skills. You don't need to list watching the dog or doing laundry for our benefit, but because those are things that you're already good at. Um, we need the link for the documentation that you keep uh, for jobs applied to when you applied, including the information from number three. So tracking the, the job applications and the resumes, apartment applications, so on and so forth. <clears throat> So not what was asked for, check Craigslist for possible rooms. So these are a little spreadsheet that was made for apartments. Um, and then asking, you know, what about the utilities? Pets have uh, extra costs. Uh, not a good indicator of overall apartment experience. These are all negative. So just a little unhinged, a little unhinged, okay? Um, I'm not a spreadsheet girly by any means. This can be helpful for sure if you're looking for somewhere to live or whatever. Um, definitely helpful, but I... I would be hesitant if the person that I was renting from was like, make me a spreadsheet before you decide to move out. That's kind of weird. Okay, so this is 3.20 at 5.48 p.m. in the group chat with Poppy, Xena, and Spawn. So Poppy says, understood, utility costs should be able to be calculated online. Then Poppy says, hey, Spawn, two things. One, can you let me know after 7 p.m. when you are done getting dinner, uh, when you're done getting dinner so we can start cooking? Two, if you want to discuss the assignments today, let us, excuse me, know when. Uh, we have time before we cook and after dinner before stream cut off to send it in is 8 p.m after that it will be too late and we'll have to look at it tomorrow after work spawn says do you want to get dinner first so i can keep working on this i'm not super hungry at the moment because i had a pretty substantial lunch so hey make sure to turn in your homework assignment for me adult child that pays rent interesting so these are 4 23 at 906 p.m so to my understanding these go one two three four Five. I think that's how it goes. So we're going to read these in order. So in the group chat, again, uh, this, I believe, is Xena. So Xena says, um, let me be clear. Be upfront about your plans. Telling us randomly is not acceptable. Also, we work two jobs. You know this. I honestly don't get why you act like this. Juan says, okay, Saturday is fine then, question mark. Y'all told me uh, the weekend, so I'm asking about the weekend. Um, Xena then says, what is wrong with you? Friday is a work day, and you asked about Friday. Juan says, what do you mean? What is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? Are you attacking me for no reason? Dina says, this isn't attacking. You keep changing the story. Go back and read what I what you wrote. You basically made it sound like Frida or Bust and then asked about Saturday. Uh, then uh, Spawn says, I was going to ask about Saturday. And then that's cut off. And then this one says, Zena says, you haven't been upfront with any of your plans. Would Friday work for me to start moving? The new housemate goes out of town the next day, so I want to get the keys before then. This implies that you have a deadline that you need to do a thing by. Before you start moving, you do have obligations with this current living situation that you need to discuss and how you're going to help take care of them. We didn't know that you needed to have uh, this talk with you this soon. Uh... Zena says, Spawn, this whole thing is, is an extremely poor way to communicate. I honestly suggest uh, that you write up something for both of us, what we've established so far, and you still need to plan just to start this conversation over. Breaking boundaries as you leave is a really bad look. And Spawn says, okay, sorry for not communicating. Zena says, I think you honestly need to consider how you want to leave here. Or if you, how you want to leave here. Do you want it to be on bad terms or amicable terms? Right now, I'm watching you destroy your relationships with both myself and your mom. If you're doing, if you're actually sorry, then stop doing this behavior. This is you making choices. So what this sounds like to me is they were like, I think I'm going to try and move this weekend. Like, is there a day that works for you? And because they didn't give like an exact date or time, it's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And then using, you know, manipulative language to be like, you're not setting clear boundaries. You're not making, you're not meeting our expectations. Um, and then of course, you know, it's the, the, the threats, the, the thinly veiled threats at the end. Like, do you want to leave on good terms or do you want our relationship to be fucking destroyed? Very weird, very weird. Um, I will say that from Xena and Poppy both, everything that I've read in this Google Doc and the other Google Doc that we covered last week, um, this is the epitome of people learning and weaponizing like therapeutic language to manipulate and control others. And it's honestly just, it's, I don't have words to talk about how, like how upsetting it is to read these things. Um, Especially when you consider these people are like in their 40s. This is an adult child that's living at home with them and paying rent, mind you. And this is how they're talking to, to this kid. It's very, it's very, very, very weird to me. Um, and again, the, the veiled threats of like, do you want a good relationship with or not? 
and of course kind of like using therapeutic language to frame it in a really really weird way to like get the upper hand in the conversation i this is like advanced malicious intentional calculated levels of like bullshittery and manipulation and control it's it's so bizarre to read and see it like happen in real time it is bizarro world up in here i don't have words to describe it other than like a demonic force truly like a truly evil vindictive malicious evil spirit i don't even know this only goes back you know to what 2023 what was it like when they were growing up who knows probably worse <laughs> i'm sure okay <clears throat> batch two creature of the night is spawn so this is in spawn's discord server okay so <clears throat> creature of the night so spawn says grumble 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 my mom completely without any warning talks about a lot of bronies are turning out to be pedophiles me when you say things you say things without warning that need a warning mom sorry for talking about bronies without warning you me Dot, dot, dot. I was referring to the pedophile part. Mom makes a joke about a lot of bronies turning out to be pedophiles. One that essentially always says their synonyms and then starts laughing. Me. Some of the things you think are funny aren't actually that funny. My mom. No, you're just overly sens sensitive sometimes. Spawn. I don't know. Maybe you shouldn't make jokes about pedophilia. Uh, and then context. This was around the same time that Brit at Brit's Galaxy Brain came out about Lily Orchard. So take that as you will. Um, four, three. Triggers are bullshit. Spawn says, my mom has opinions on triggers. Me, person, doesn't want to watch show because it's a trigger because of reason for trigger. My mom, did you tell them that that's a bullshit answer? No, I didn't because it's not a bullshit answer. And then, yeah, exactly. Or like when one of my friends has a phobia of dogs and my mom went, did you tell them they're a bad person? Like just because you love your dog doesn't mean someone else's phobias aren't valid. Or when I say pedophile jokes aren't funny, she calls me too sensitive. Or 11, projecting. Creature of the Night says, girl, my mom is so insane. Quote, people keep projecting onto me that I'm abusive. End quote. Hmm, I wonder why. If this isn't, if this is a consistent pattern for you, then maybe it's a sign that you are the problem. If she can say with her whole chest and not recognize the irony, then there's no hope for her ever realizing that she treats me like dog shit. So this age, well, um, hmm. Again, I will, <laughs> I will say, I say it often, guys, often, guys, write this down, memorize it and print it into your brain. Okay, this is, True for most things. If everywhere that you go smells like shit, check your shoes, okay? If every group of friends, if every situation, if every relationship, if everybody in your life is like, you're kind of abusive, it's time to, to have a good hard look at yourself in the mirror. If this is constant feedback that you're getting from multiple different points, different sources, different people, different communities, different friend groups, there might be, there might be validity to that criticism about you, okay? Everywhere you go smells like shit, check your shoes, okay? 511, Xena hoarding the bathroom. Spawn says, I hate how much Xena hoards the bathroom time. They're not even using it, but they won't let me shower because they might have to piss. Like I've told you so many times, you're allowed to just go while I'm showering. I don't care. But I was walking around in 80 degree heat and it's already been a few days since I last bathed. So like I wanted to take a shower as soon as I got home, but no. Screams, finally I get permission to shower. And then Xena goes, actually you should wait till we get home so the dog won't be alone for the 15, 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes you'll be in the shower for. Bruh, she will be fine for that long. I do think that I think that uh, dogs can actually be okay for like 15 minutes while they're by themselves. It will just say <clears throat> 521 quote, don't move my stuff. So red is poppy. Poppy says spawn at some point in the evening. Can you hit up dishes? Xena is shopping and I'm working on notes. Spawn says I would really prefer not. I've been feeling burnt out and tired for a while now. Xena says I asked you not to move my stuff on the couch. Please don't move my stuff anymore. Spawn says, you told me to wait five minutes. I waited closer to 10 minutes. And instead of moving it, you decided to lecture me on keeping my door open. And then we have the uh, Xena spiral here where we do we do like the spam messages where we can't just have one condensed message. We send like 40 fucking messages blowing up somebody's phone. So then don't move it. Next. I still said not to. Next. I'll try to leave when I go to the grocery store. Or I'm trying to leave to go to the grocery store. Next. I've been trying to leave for the last hour. Next. You could have asked for clarification. Next. You forget stuff too. Next. But can't give me that benefit of the doubt. Next. Now I have a big pile to sort. Next. And you don't even know what any of it is. Juan says the pile is the same as it was before. It's just in a different spot. Zena says, no, it's not. Stuff was separated and at least somewhat sorted. Next. The fragile stuff was in one area. Next. Don't move my stuff anymore. Next. No exceptions. Juan says, I didn't want to get yelled at for not replacing the couch cover later on. Dina says, don't move my stuff. That's it. 
Poppy says, folks, let's drop it for now. We can talk later when we have calmed down. Cena says, okay. So these are timestamps for the messages um, in the second part. So you can see this is like a 10 minute interaction. We're just like, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Six, two, three days of dishes. So creature of the night in their discord. Spawn says, I'm sick of everything. I'm sick of living here. I'm sick of my parents nagging me for every tiny nitpick. You cannot offload three days of dishes on me and then get mad at me when it takes me a long time. And then this is a screenshot from their group chat. Poppy says, hey, Spawn, dishes seem like they took a while. It's now later than we planned. We will have to postpone the house meeting. I'm going to need you to work on your room tomorrow because we have some Molly made Friday. We have Molly made Friday and the AC repair folks on Saturday. We will attempt to have the meeting tomorrow. Spawn says, okay. Poppy says, I will say it's frustrating because we were waiting for you... We were waiting for you and there were not a lot of dishes. Please be more mindful in the future. Spawn says, there was a lot of dishes though. And then Spawn in the Discord chat says, and later they got mad at me for waking up late and got mad at me for starting my bedtime routine 30 minutes late. Again, this is like shit that you would do for like an eight-year-old. This isn't shit that you do for like a 24-year-old fucking person that lives in your house and pays rent. Like, I said this yesterday. I'm not a very emotionally reactive person by any means. Um, if I was Poppy and Zena's kid, I would fucking kill myself in a video game. Like, this is an insane level of helicopter parenting. Again, for somebody who's a fucking adult, bro. Like, if you have an eight-year-old, it's like, okay, 30 minutes late on your bedtime routine is kind of a big deal. Like, we're disrupting your sleep schedule, blah, blah, blah. You woke up late, your schedule's gonna be all fucky-wucky, blah, 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 whatever. But for, like, again, like a 24-year-old fucking child, bro. Your bedtime routine, 30 minutes late? Your bedtime routine, bro. Your bedtime routine, bro. <sighs> to me, to my wife. I noticed that uh, you brushed your teeth 30 minutes late tonight. Our bedtime routine is... It's like, what the fuck, dude? It's so... It's so weird. It's so controlling. So Creature says... Uh, Spawn says... And also, like, I'm 22, but every aspect of my life is time. I still have a fucking bedtime, and they keep moving said bedtime to earlier and earlier because of not doing other things on time. I literally have ADHD and autism and a heart condition. And then Green is Spawn's friend. Spawn's friend says, uh, this reminds me way too much of uh, our shit dad who made a monthly schedule calendars, not just for me, but for the, our mother, his ex-wife. The bedtime shit is completely unacceptable, full stop. Spawn says, like, I can't always do things on times, especially in the heat because of my fucking blood disorder that means that he affects me so much worse. I literally collapsed a few weeks ago, and we haven't had AC since March. The friend says, like, do parents not realize that forcing their kids to be so micromanaged by them will hurt them and often make us codependent and have poor self-management skills? Juan says, POTS isn't a fucking good enough excuse for me not waking up on time. My entire life has to be on their schedule and not on my own. So even, you know, to outside parties, this is obviously like super fucking crazy behavior, which surprise, surprise, this is fucking crazy behavior. So this is uh, a little thing about uh, POTS. Uh, so TLDR, um, POTS have lower circ circul circulation of blood, um, excessive pooling of blood. Um, when you're upright, elevated levels of certain hormones, shakiness, headaches, excessive sweating, nausea, brain fog, lightheadedness, lasting fatigue, intolerance to exercise, or prolonged worsening of general symptoms after activity. Um, so pot symptoms typically get worse in warm environments, such as hot bath shower, hot room, hot day. In situations involving a lot of standing, such as waiting for a bus or when shopping. Um, in fl uh, if fluid and salt intake have not been adequate, such as after skipping a meal. So working in warm conditions, not good for it, exacerbates the symptoms. Um, standing up a lot, like doing a lot of, you know, stagnant kind of standing because the blood will pull. And then if you're like blood sugar or your the salt content in your body is like off from not eating or, you know, uh, missing meals, so on and so forth. So... We know that this is going to exacerbate symptoms um, if these are things that they're doing. And we've mentioned already that there was no AC. And we will get into later the restricting of uh, meals, which is problematic. Um, so I remember Spawn is 5'1 and weighs 80 pounds when healthy. Uh, this is not a product of abuse, but consider how, how much smaller they are uh, than ZMP on top of the pot. So this is like a little teeny tiny human being. Okay, a small a small dude. A small dudette. A small dude areno. Okay, so the... They need to be eating a little bit more, probably, probably have exacerbation of symptoms because like their body is smaller. So just to be mindful. Okay. So 620 can't eat if you miss your scheduled meal times. Okay. So this is a text. This is spawn uh, saying uh, I was late getting to the kitchen and Zena told me I wasn't allowed to get lunch, which is not acceptable. I need food, especially because I need more food than I normally do. I get that I was late, but I need food. I should be allowed to get food when I need it. I'm sorry uh, I was late, but I still need food regardless. 
Poppy says, we have a schedule in our house and you need to follow that. Xena doesn't get personal time with consistent interruption. And while I agree with you, and while I agree with you that making lunch shouldn't be an issue, in the past, the problem is that often lunch making has been noisy uh, or a time to overly interact with Xena. I will talk to Xena about the situation, but I need to hold you to your schedule. Talk later. Also, you are also positive with COVID. That's an issue as well. Please remember that the schedule as a whole was more important because it was to prevent close contact. Spawn says, one of the symptoms I've noticed uh, is that COVID makes me specifically hungrier, which is the other reason this is such an issue. So <clears throat> what this reads to me is that fucking Xena needs her fucking alone time. And the alone time is more important than making sure the kid can fucking eat. That's what this reads to me as, which is categorically fucking insane okay even okay even if you have a roommate and you guys are making your scheduled food or whatever and you have like a scheduled meal time say like every day i make lunch at noon if i have a roommate i'll just leave the shit on the counter and they can grab it whenever or i'll put it in the fridge and they can warm, excuse me they can warm it up like this is fucking insane you can't go into the kitchen and get your lunch because it's going to interrupt xena's fucking alone time you're going to restrict somebody's ability to go and eat lunch because you want to have like your fucking alone time in the kitchen? Incredible, bro. Incredible amounts of like control. That's fucking crazy. Fucking crazy, bro. <clears throat> okay, 627 waters off. This is in the Discord. Excuse me, spawn says yells i go to take my meds and i can't because the water brittles are empty i go to refill my water our water is shut off again i go to get filtered water from the fridge Zena yells at me for waking them up during their alone time i explain that i need water and our water got shut off Zena says that i should have gotten it ahead of time which i literally would have no way to predict that our water was getting shut off my parents never tell me when we get emails from the apartment uh, apartment complex so i would have no idea of knowing getting into the fridge disrupts your alone time somebody getting into the fridge to get fucking water disrupts your alone time like it sounds like these people need to be in a fucking padded room, not in an apartment with, like, somebody else to live with. Like, it sounds like you need to be in a padded room for the rest of your life if you can't handle somebody opening the fucking fridge to get water. Holy shit. All right, 628, moldy jelly. <clears throat> Spawn says, convince Zena is genuinely trying to starve me. I was going to make spaghetti, and then Zena told me to make something quick because they need food, and I should have gotten food at 7, and their meal time is 8. They should have gotten food at 8. Then I go to make a PB&J, but I realize I don't have any jelly, so I ask my parents if I can use their Smucker's brand, and they say yes. I already put the peanut butter on one half of the sandwich at this point, and then I realize the Smucker's jelly is moldy and smells really bad, so I ask if I can use the other jelly in the fridge that's for Xena. Need you, need, I remind you, one singular sandwich, and Xena says no, and goes, if I let you use it, then I won't have any left. My mom has to, my mom has to convince them to let me use their jelly for one singular sandwich. The amount of, like, just controlling fucking insanity, bro. Insanity, bro. <sighs> 731. Salami. I like these ominous titles. Salami. So, or 73, not 731, excuse me. So, Spawn says, I'm really not feeling well. I asked my mom to go to the pharmacy for me. She says no, but she'll take me to the pharmacy, which is fine, whatever. And then she gets mad at me for not asking her how they were doing first. And she's upset that I don't check and see how they're doing before I ask for help. But never ask how I'm doing before they ask me for anything either. And then she got mad at me for trying to check the dog's paw when I noticed she was limping and was like, the dog's fine. And then we get into the car and she basically says that it that I wouldn't be so sick if I were taking better care of myself. And she wants me to do protein powder again. And I drink uh, and drink a little salt. Uh, drink a little or drink like, God, I have the worst dyslexia, you guys. Please put me down protein powder again and drink like straight up salt water and i said it's not my fault that i'm sick and she said there you go again not even listening to to not oh my god pause quote there you go again you're not even listening no one said the word fault end quote and i said i had COVID for two weeks and i'm not sick anymore and i don't know what she wants from me Spawn says, not putting in the bigger vent here because I'm too exhausted to go over it again, but I just found out the salami is now labeled poppy only. There's no other salami in the fridge, plus the salami is the only sandwich meat that I eat, plus I'm the only one that, plus I'm the one that fucking paid for it. So, restricting food that this person fucking paid for it. Again, this person is like 20 fucking years old, bro. I would go ape shit. I would go fucking ape shit if I bought myself food and my roommate labeled it like blank only. I would go fucking Ham, dude. That's insane. Oh, my God. 
responds says she's not going to notice two slices are missing the package was open today like today i know we shared the last package because this one was unopened uh before yesterday which means we shared the last package so if she really wants to claim a package as separate like that she shouldn't have touched the other one each box box has two packages of salami in it if she claims one is for herself doesn't get to touch the other one and yet also keep in mind salami is like the only meat that i eat regularly and she's the one who constantly tells me I'm not eating enough protein and acts like it's my fault. I'm sick for not caring for myself for not eating enough and then pulls this shit. Uh, mom, blaming my bad nutrition for my pots. And we can't have a guest over, so I can't even call her out. <sighs> this is mental. This is mental, dude. 721, plastic cups in the dishwasher. Zena says, Spawn, why are you putting recycling in the dishwasher? You're just going to melt the plastic cups. I'm glad you didn't run the dishwasher. This could have easily destroyed the en entire dishwasher. Uh... Spawn says, okay, I'll go clean them now. Dina says, it's my alone time. You can take care of it later. Bro! <laughs> How do I get this coveted alone time? Like, don't talk to me. Don't make any noise. Don't breathe. Don't exist around me for, like, multiple hours a day. How the fuck do I get this? This is crazy. 8-6. Always wrong. Uh, Spawn says, I'm so tired. I could l I could do literally anything in the world and Zena would yell at me for it. Uh, they want a baby gate in front of my door to keep the dog out of my room. We've had a baby gate for a week, but it hasn't been taken out of its box yet. I decided to put it together so my parents didn't have to deal with it, you know, trying to do a nice thing. And Zena yells at me for 30 minutes for it and threatens to kick me out of the house because I, quote, can't follow instructions and talks about how I haven't been doing my chores and they've had to pick up the slack. Ignoring the fact that one, the reason I wasn't doing my chores a month ago was because I had COVID. Two, I've had to pick up their slack for years. Three, I have been doing chores just later than normal. The last time I had an argument with Zena, she said, quote, you want to be independent, yet you can't remember to take out the trash after you were sick. Sick in it, quote, like, bro, one thing I had to be reminded of. And then my mom is like, quote, I don't think I can ever repair what you've done to our relationship with Zena, end quote. Yet Zena doesn't even apologize for treating me like shit. I am so tired. 816, house meetings. Spawn says, every house meeting I ask for is unrestricted access to the kitchen. Every house meeting is my parents telling me my access to the kitchen isn't restricted. And then every time I go into the kitchen outside of my allotted time, I get yelled at. And and this time when I brought up the thing that I mentioned at the house meeting, Zena went, quote, we didn't say that. If you want something changed, you have to bring it up at the house meeting. Could you imagine having to ask for permission to be in the kitchen at an apartment that you pay rent for? Could you fucking imagine? And again, layers there's there's layers right not only not being allowed to have access to a kitchen in an apartment that you fucking pay rent at these people are your parents these people are your guardians these are people who are supposed to take care of you and like watch you and like parent you and it's like actually you're only allowed in the kitchen at this time what kind of mental illness necessitates that you can only be in the kitchen for an allotted period of time again if I was in a roommate situation and somebody was like, you can't be in the kitchen from this time to this time, I would go berserk. There is no fucking way that that would ever fucking fly in any other context or any other situation. If I had a roommate that like worked nights or whatever, would I be mindful of the noise that I was making in the kitchen if I got up to like make breakfast or something and they were sleeping? Yeah, of course. Um, but to say that you can't be in the fucking kitchen, that's crazy. That's fucking crazy, bro. That's insane. That's fucking insane. Oh, <clears throat> all right. 913, moving the furniture. Spawn says, over my body to the point that I think I'm going to be physically sick. I got yelled at for moving all my furniture to the living room so I could vacuum my whole bedroom. I did so much today. Clean and sanitize my entire vet, my entire desk, vacuum parts of my room that haven't been vacuumed since we moved in like four years ago, but I get no praise for that. Instead, I get reprimanded for moving things into the living room. Excuse me. Spawn's friend says, angry, sad face. Why did you get yelled? Why you get yelled at? Not fair. Spawn says, uh, to be fair, there was very little space in the living room, but also they weren't using the living room. I didn't want to leave Phil sitting in my room before I left on Saturday, so I deep cleaned everything. And because my parents were rushing uh, me near the end, I couldn't take a break, even though my pots was getting so bad, I thought I was going to vomit. And then, so uh, this is a message from Xena. Um, Xena blank. Uh, so Spawn, Poppy and I are discussing the exact details of the timing of this. You will need to get up early to take care of the house chores that were supposed to be done today. You were told that you needed to leave uh, time for this evening, but you did not do that. In addition, due to having all of your rooms, content, and a living room and kitchen means that you'll also, uh, you have also brought all of the dust and allergens with it. You will be assigned the task to clean the kitchen and living room because of this. Further, you must be explicit about your intentions with people, claiming that someone saw you do something is not an acceptable form of communication. It basically puts responsibility on someone else to supervise your activities, even though communication was asked for. 
Uh, it also takes advantage of myself and Poppy when we are dealing with chronic illnesses or ADHD symptoms because it relies on us to have the extra spoons to focus on and knowing what you're doing when we're not able, uh, when we are not able to or not even in proximity. I am upset with you and how you didn't fully explain the task you were doing and the impact it had on me being able to access the house and with what you communicated as reasons it was okay when I talked to you. This is, I, I keep saying it. The only thing that I can say is this is fucking crazy. That's really the only phrase that I have for this is this is fucking crazy. This is fucking crazy. If I had a roommate and they sent me a message like this, I would, I would flip out. I'd be like, you're moving out or I'm moving out. Somebody's leaving today, bro. Like you need to get your shit. What are you talking about? Because I moved my stuff into the living room. Now I have to clean the whole living room and the kitchen. Get real, bro. Get real, bro. Like, if I brought a bunch of shit downstairs and everything got dirty, I would clean up my mess, obviously. But being told, it is now your duty to clean the fucking living room and clean the fucking kitchen because you decided, oh my god, bro. I could never. I could never. I could never deal with this. I would... I. Oh my god. Oh my god, bro. Oh my god. Uh, they, them, we don't know the identity or uh, gender of Spawn. Spawn is... An amorphous being that just uh, has leaked the logs. We don't really know anything about Spawn. So I've just been using they, them. All right, 9.53. So this is the same day after doing the furniture shit. So this was at 9.35 when this, like, your responsibility is now to clean, blah, blah, blah. And this is at fucking 9.30 at night, mind you. So almost 7 o'clock at night, 9.53. Uh, Xena says this, it's cut off. So Spawn says, y'all were the ones who didn't leave time for it. It was nearly 10 p.m. by the time that you came out to talk to me about chores. You could have talked to me at any point in the two to three hours before I started moving things out of my room and you didn't. I'm not taking advantage of either of you, and frankly, I don't appreciate you implying the malicious intent saying in, in saying that. I get that uh, I should have told you guys about it, and I'm sorry for not doing that. Poppy didn't say anything about it when I told her I was doing it, and so I think that what I think there wasn't I didn't think there was an issue. However, communication is a two-way street, and you also need to learn that learn to not spring house chores on me the day of like that. Zena says I'm not arguing. If you want to talk further, you need to have a conversation with me. They're literally having a fucking conversation right now, but okay. Um, Spawn says, I'm sick and tired of every single thing I do in your presence being a mistake. I cleaned sections of my room that probably have been cleaned since we moved in. I worked uh, I worked myself into being physically ill because you were rushing me and reprimanding me for moving stuff into the living room. I am done lying down and taking it every time that I am not to your definition of the perfect picture. Because it's been made abundantly clear that I never will be. Dina says, you're making accusations without any data. Bro, imagine getting in a fight with your mom and you're like, mom, I feel like you're being kind of a bitch to me. And your mom's like, do you have any data to support that claim? <laughs> do you have any data to support the claim that I'm being a bitch right now? Fucking owned with facts and logic, liberal. Eat shit. <laughs> Zeta says, I repeat, if you want to talk about this further, then you need to ask for a time for an actual conversation. Oh, sorry. You need to schedule a time to air your grievances with me. I could never, bro. I could never. I can't believe people like this are real and exist. <sighs> Spawn says, if you don't want to argue, don't start a debate. I'll drop this for now, though. So this is, is this the same day? No, it's not. Okay, so this is, uh, quote, bad person in the Discord server. Spawn says, bad, bad, bad person. Didn't he yell at me for, put, yelled at, I'm going to try and read this. There's a lot of typos. I'm going to just fill in the blanks. Zena yelled at me for putting recycling in car wrong after being told to put recycling in car. Wouldn't accept apology. It said, should know better. Act like I did it on purpose. Didn't mean to be bad. Um, the next message is quite a few hours later. It says, I'm not mad at my dog. I don't, I hate that I'm mad at her. It's not her fault. Parents love her more than me. Not that I ever act on that anger, but stay with us for a minute. Then look at this screenshot from their servers the previous day. Um, Patchwork says, I'm loving everything about this look. And Poppy says, I love you, my son. Now sit with this again. So here they are like roasting the absolute fuck out of their own kid. Being like horribly fucking manipulative, controlling, threatening, you know, like if you don't start acting right, like we're going to take away your internet, you know, do you want to leave on amicable terms or not? We've seen like the, the veiled threats, obviously. And then in a Discord server, like they're role playing, they're fucking son child fucking fantasy shit where it's like i love you my son i love my adopted discord children but my real child can kick rocks that's so nice bro okay <clears throat> nine four the list was false 
Spawn says, bro, my mom is insane. She's mad at blank for not talking to her when I was asking blank for a place to stay and escape my mom. Friend says, what the fuck? Red flag. Oh my God. And then Spawn says, and she still believes that believes that ever returning I don't know what that's supposed to say. On the list of things that they were doing was either false or an exaggeration. This is a, the list is at the end of this doc, so we'll see the list of shit that they had to do. So, <clears throat> Spawn says, "What are y'all's credit scores for an apartment searching in the future? Since I don't have a credit score, I would need a co-signer." Zena says, "This is a massive ask and not something we handle over text. Got to schedule your appointment." Uh, Spawn says, "I'm not asking for a co-sign like right now. I'm just asking what your credit scores are." Zena says, "We don't just know that info. We have to look it up. You're also asking us to co-sign and plan on that money, but that is a larger conversation. You can still reach out. You can still research apartments without our credit scores." I'm not asking you to do anything like that. I'm just collecting information. Dina says, by simply, quote, collecting that information, you are asking for our financial information. You don't give someone your private financial information unless, you're absolute, unless you absolutely intend for them to use it. Spawn says, okay, I didn't know that was such a big ask. So again, remember, we saw the big fucking spreadsheet at the beginning of this that they want Spawn to do like this meticulous apartment research. And Spawn is literally just asking like, yo, can I get your credit score to like factor into these apartments? Um, that I'm looking for, and because I don't have a credit score, somebody's gonna have to fucking co-sign for me. But that's a big ask, and you have to schedule an appointment to discuss that. 921 Moldy Counter Spawn in the Discord says, I feel like it's a bit telling that if I fall asleep, I fall asleep easier and don't get as nauseous when I'm in Blank's house. I think this is Zena's house. Like, I think the living situation might be stressful enough that it's negatively affecting my health. Then later, Spawn says, bro, my parents consistently talking about how they don't think I'm adult enough to be independent because I'm forgetful. But the, but one week I'm gone and suddenly there's mold growing on the kitchen counter. <laughs> Delish. We can't wipe off the counter. We have to have our alone time, bro. Come on. 930, I might be autistic now, so I'll, I can just be an asshole. LOL. Spawn says, mom's like, so I'm all, I might have mild autism, which means every time I'm an asshole to people, I can use the autism as an excuse. Friend says, ew, kills her. Spawn says it was a joke, but I don't, I don't know. I didn't think it was funny. 1014, quote, don't do tone indicators. Um, so Spawn asks, is this what you want, Jen? And then Xena says, we are not doing slash here. I can't function with that. If you can't communicate tone over text, then you need to talk to us in person. So for people that get like so up in their feelings and defensive about like fucking everything, I feel like tone indicators would actually be quite helpful in this situation. Um, and I, I would say... Whether intentionally or not, though, I am leaning on the side of intentionality heavily with everything that we've seen. This is like a way to kind of like manipulate and control, right? Because if you're able to say like, I misread your tone or your tone's coming off as like being a mega bitch. But with the tone indicators, there's no there's no wiggle room for that. Like you can't hand wave what they say or like the tone or have like an excuse for being like a bitch about what they're saying, right? Yeah, exactly. Like if they if they make the tone clear, then there's no there's no gray area for them to kind of like attack spawn over shit that they're saying. Um, again, could be, you know, just like unintentional. I would err heavily on the side of this being intentional, um, as it seems that everything they are doing is very intentional and very malicious and very controlling in an attempt to like manipulate uh, this kid. So uh, spawn says, I just didn't want my tone to be taken and rude. How would you prefer I communicate over tone? Communicate tone over text if tags don't work. And then Gina says, text like normal, tone tags don't work for everyone and they're constantly changing. You literally just say like, slash gen or like, I think that tone indicators are like meh, but if I was dealing with somebody that constantly misread my intentions or like constantly misread my tone over text, I would use them. Just because I don't want to fucking fight some, first of all, I would never talk to somebody that I would have to clarify my fucking tone to this extent would never talk to somebody like that but hypothetically if i did if somebody would consistently misinterpret my tone intentionally in like a malicious way to attack me instead of like dealing with what i'm actually saying i would just use tone indicators we don't we aren't going to do tone indicators fuck you i am going to use them because you're like riding my ass about misreading my tone every single fucking time that i say something like just taking away a tool for spawn to have like control over just a modicum of control over how the conversations are going just taking that tool away Ah, and then this is this is unapo unapologetically ableism. Tone tags make minimal effort and are generally helpful when avoiding miscommunication. And as we can see, they kind of thrive on the gray area of miscommunication to be antagonistic or, you know, mean or controlling or whatever the fuck to the kid. So 10-3, Xena takes over the kitchen. Pay close attention to the timestamps here. Roger, roger. <clears throat> okay, so Creature says at 3.02 p.m. Donuts and Swiss rolls were a bad breakfast choice. Uh, lactose in taller ants. 
Oh, lactose intolerant. Uh, I literally had no other option because I didn't have any clean knives. Parents didn't let me do my fucking dishes yesterday. And then we have 8... Oh, 8.50 p.m. So several hours later. Bro, I fucking hate Xena. I literally haven't eaten all day and I tell Xena that and they still won't let me heat up food in the microwave. I've had breakfast and that's it. That was eight hours ago. Quote, you should have coordinated better. You didn't tell us anything about going. I did and you knew that I was going. Like if it wasn't clear enough to you that I could have fucking asked. I'm so exhausted. I have granola bars, but that's literally all I have. The friend at 902 says, I guess you could have eaten granola bars for the rest of your life because clearly Xena is more important than you. Sarcasm. Uh, Spawn says, literally, scheduling and time sh and shit is always more important than my health because Xena might get a migraine. Never mind the fact that I'm starving. This is at 902. At 1020, Creature says, or Spawn says, I still haven't had lunch yet. Xena is still in the kitchen and I haven't had a real meal since 2 p.m. Friend says, what the fuck are they doing in there? Spawn says, cooking. Friend says, it's been two hours. Spawn, sa Spawn says, they're incapable of making a quick meal and yet they ask me to make something quick all the time. Friend says, what in the goddamn are they making? Something in a slow cooker? They have to sit and watch it while it's there? Uh, Spawn says, I saw pie crust on top of the freezer, so I assume they're, they're making pot pie. Friend says, okay, well, the first thing I saw like an hour an hour and 20 minutes ago, I guess I'll give them that one, but why aren't you allowed in the kitchen? Like, I don't know, just use the microwave. 1024, Spawn says, exactly. 1024, friend asks, is the kitchen small? Spawn says, I'm just asking to use the microwave. And no, my kitchen is like twice the size of every other kitchen I've ever seen in a house or apartment. Everything Xena is doing is the opposite side of the kitchen of the microwave. We're still around then 10.30 time. Friend says, like, does Xena not realize that you have to be standing in front of the microwave for it to work? Like, is there an issue you being in the kitchen? Like, put things in, walk away until it beeps. Um, come to Canada. Let's find you an apartment together. I don't want you dealing with these people. Uh, Spawn says, update. It's now been like two hours and 20 minutes since I was told to fuck off. I still haven't gotten to eat. This is at 11.12 p.m. Spawn says, I had to get my mom to talk to them about me being allowed to eat. Friend says, I'd kill someone if after being talked to like that, after being talked to, Z Zena refuses to give up. If Zena uh, refuses to budge, let me know and I'll come bite them. Spawn says, at 1022, or 1122, my mom was also like trying to say that it was my fault because I went shopping before getting home and my food, and my food time is at 7. Bestie, I wasn't going to be off the bus and home until 750. It was scheduled out like that on time on the fucking calendar. So we have them saying that they haven't eaten at 3.02 p.m. So they had like their lunch at 3.02 p.m., which was donuts and Swiss rolls. And then all the way fast forward to 11.30 at night. 11.30 at night, they still haven't been allowed into the kitchen to make food. Um, like, I want to know what kind of person like requires this side this like rigid of a schedule for times people are allowed in certain areas of the house other than just being like controlling and manipulative i have to know why like there's no rational reason like okay hey guys from eight to nine o'clock i'm gonna be making dinner i'm gonna be in the kitchen okay i would like it if you could stay out of the kitchen to the best of your ability because you know i i would like to make dinner and i would like to have some space to do my dinner activities how does somebody coming in, throwing something in the microwave, leaving, coming back and getting that thing disrupt your fucking kitchen time? And how the fuck is your kitchen time like nine fucking hours? What are you doing in the kitchen? Are you making like 231 souffles? What the fuck are you doing in the kitchen that takes that long? I don't understand it. Like it is like it just reads as pure manipulation. Just purely I want to control every aspect of your life. That's all it comes across as fucking crazy. Okay, this is on 1013. This is the next day. So this is 1014. Your time is not your own. Hmm. Interesting quote. Uh, Spawn says in the group chat with Poppy and Xena says, sorry, uh, but I can't put off doing my dishes any longer. You can't spring chores on me at the end of the day and expect me to drop everything. To do them, I will still get done what I can from this, but my dishes will take priority. Poppy says, Spawn, do your dishes first. You can get your list done too. If something isn't working, we can move it to Sunday, but you have to focus on the dishes and get them done, e done efficiently. They shouldn't take more than 30 minutes. Please get moving now. And yes, you can be told to, you can be told the things the day of. You do not have a job, full stop. So I will pause here and recall to the earlier conversation with the screenshots between Xena and Spawn, where Spawn did not give an exact date and an exact time for plans, and they got really fucking pissed off about, you can't just spring shit on us, we have to plan things in advance, da 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 we can't do day of, we have to have our fucking weekly meetings or whatever, you can't just bring shit to me, you have to like schedule out a fucking appointment, but now it's like, oh, you wanted to try and change something? Not allowed. Not allowed. You have to let me do it the day of. I can spring it on you whenever the fuck I want, but it doesn't work that way for you. 
alone time for me, but not for thee. God, how do I get in on this, bro? God, fuck. <laughs> how do I get on, alone, in on this, like, mandatory fucking alone time where nobody can bother me? Ugh. Let's go, bro. Okay, so this is... I don't see a timestamp on here. But so then we have it 2.11. Yeah, it doesn't say what time this is. So later in the day, I would imagine 2.11. Um, oh, sorry, I paused. My bad. Allow me to respond. So, or continue. So Pop Poppy says, uh, you do not have a, a job, full stop. Spawn says, telling me things the day of is fine, but more... But it's more of you can't expect me to drop everything and do whatever it is. Poppy says, I absolutely can. You have no job and are not in school. If you want to talk further, come out here. Girl, I would be flying out of that room so fucking fast. I'd be like, what the fuck did you just say to me? Oh my god. Woo. So later in the day, <clears throat> Spawn says, but also telling me things that I have is not super helpful for my autism slash ADHD because I need to have a concrete plan of what's happening each day. Which, you know, to be fair, I'm the same way. You know, if I have like a plan for the day and somebody is like, by the way, you need to do this. I'm like, oh, I can still do it. But I'm like, oh, it is very disruptive to your day. So fair, fair point, fair point. Poppy says, fair, uh, but this is why we had a comprehensive schedule for you and you didn't hold to that. Xena says, also accommodations need to be discussed ahead of time. It's not fair to make boundaries and expect them to be held to when people don't even know what they are. Plus, you aren't the only one with disabilities. Fawn says, I've told you guys this before, but it's understandable that you'd forget, so I can't be mad at that. So, being passive, letting it go. Spawn later that night says, uh, also, Xena assumed I was trying to be an asshole when I was like, I get how you could forget. Bestie, I have ADHD. I forget all the time. I understand that forgetting things, I'm not trying to be a dick. And then Gina goes, quote, I write everything down so it's not possible. Um, I forget. Clearly, you just didn't tell me. I told you at least five times. Whack. 1019, spawn in Discord. Fuck, I forgot to turn off airplane mode and I missed a call about my ride to the dentist. Gina won't take me because they might get a migraine. I'm more than 10 minutes late to the dentist. I Dentist will make me reschedule. I don't know what to do. My mouth hurts so much. Spawn later says, why does this keep happening? I have to wait another two weeks now because Zena won't take me and I missed the call. My mouth has been in pain for months. I've missed the appointment that I was supposed to help get my life together. And I missed the appointment to fix my teeth. Everything feels so hopeless right now. You might get a migraine. Sorry, babe. Can't go to the grocery store. I might get a migraine. Sorry, babe. Can't help you with the taxes. I might get a migraine. Sorry, babe. Can't vacuum. Might get a migraine. Mm. <laughs> oh. Mm. 10.28 reasonable time. Spawn says, oh my fucking God, my parents told me to get up at quote, a reasonable time. I woke up at 12.30 and finished breakfast by 2 p.m. because I was supposed to vacuum in the morning. Also, d preface, they have like a weird fucked up schedule where they're like creatures of the night. Like they, like literally creature of the night. Like they have like a weird fucked up schedule where they all get up like around noon and shit. So that's why the times are kind of funky. Like where they're having breakfast at like noon and two o'clock in the afternoon. It's because they have like a weird schedule. Um, Okay, so I woke up at 12.30 and finished my breakfast by 2 p.m. because I was supposed to vacuum in the morning. And then I go to Zena, like, hey, y'all told me to be up early for chores. And then I got, and they're like, quote, this isn't early. That's really late. You made a choice and fucked everything up, and I'm sick of having to micromanage you all the time, end quote. Like, okay, it's not my fault y'all weren't very specific about what time you wanted me up. You also don't have to micromanage me. You're just incapable of accepting anything less than perfection. The next little message in here, quote, you're just going to have to get consequences later in the day, end quote. There were a million chances y'all had to wake me up. This isn't my fault that y'all didn't communicate. Again, consequences for a fucking 20-something year old that's paying rent to live in this apartment. This is not your maid. This is not your fucking little slave. This is somebody who pays rent to live at your fucking apartment. No Chick-fil-A sauce? Like, come on. <clears throat> okay. God, I, I love the titles of all of these. 1030, drop chocolate. <laughs> I just, I love it. Okay, uh, this is spawn in Discord. How to fight with Xena because I got I forgot to pick up a chocolate bar that fell on the floor when I was out of it from POTS as I explained my issues and the symptoms I was having, which is why I forgot. And Xena kept saying it was a personal choice that I hadn't had lunch yet because apparently I still had food in the fridge or freezer. Food that I either A, didn't know existed after looking for it and B, would take me 20 minutes or more to make, which I couldn't afford to do because the pharmacy closes at six. And then uh, when I said I was having POTS issues, I was accused about lying about POTS because I hadn't mentioned it earlier in the conversation, despite me saying the symptoms I was, ha they were the symptoms that I was having. And also, that even if it were true, it's still my fault because I made a quote personal choice not to eat. And then after that, accused me of lying. Zena wouldn't let me talk and kept interrupting me. Zena and Poppy are allowed to be uh, out of it, but if I am, it's due to a personal choice apparently. And if I try to end the conversation, Zena wouldn't let me, so everyone else is allowed to end the arguments, but I'm not. 
later on the same Discord logs. Uh, Spawn says, and this entire 30 minute argument turned into a screaming match that only happened because of a chocolate, because chocolate fell on the floor. I can't leave until I find a job, but I don't have the energy to look anymore. I've applied for so many places and nobody wants me. I feel like I'm suffocating. Bonus points, it was, I was very visibly struggling to breathe in that entire conversation, which you guessed it, is a symptom of POTS. This event is the Burnt Tortilla Bag on uh, 11 of 6. This is in the group chat with Poppy, Zena, and Spawn. Poppy says, hey, we need help. The tortillas were badly burned in the toaster. The tortillas, the tortillas, the tortillas, uh, the tortillas bad was burned by the toaster, toaster over, I mean, I assume that means oven, and is making everyone sick. We threw them away, but the trash needs to be taken out. No one else has used them. Please be more careful. This is a health hazard for me. Spawn says, okay, yeah. Poppy says, next time this happens, please tell us immediately. Otherwise, you will not be able to use the toaster oven. Bro! Bro! I would just lose my shit. I would just lose my fucking shit. I live here. I pay rent. I'm going to use the fucking toaster oven. I'm not eight years old. I don't lose privileges to the fucking toaster oven because something got burned in the fucking toaster oven. If it is a health hazard for you, fucking take it outside. Are you kidding me? This is, oh my god, this is bizarre world. This is fucking clown world. Hong Kong, everybody put on your fucking clown shoes. Jesus Christ on a cross. Spawn says, this wasn't me. So Spawn's saying, I wasn't the one that burned the tortillas. Poppy says, it was no one else. And you literally came out of your room with a mask on. This should be, this should be premeditative knowledge of the spell. <laughs> no one else used the tortillas in the last seven days. <laughs> Spawn says, I came out with a mask on because I smelled stuff. Poppy said, one, one you, only you. Um, <laughs> Spawn says, this wasn't premeditative. Meditative. Uh, I came out to make food and I spelled stuff, so I immediately went to grab my mask. The tortillas weren't even anywhere near the toaster. Uh, either I do all my food prep on the island. Bobby says, Zena's the only person who used, uh, used the toast and when Zena made me toast. So how did the bag get burned if you were the only person using the tortillas right now? Spawn says, I used them yesterday, not today as well. I don't know. Poppy says, fair enough. Uh, Spawn says, but I never had them near the toaster when I made stuff and I had no idea anything happened until just now because I could smell it from my, because I couldn't smell it from my room. Poppy said, I can demonstrably prove that you did, but all evidence points to you. Please clean the toaster oven as an act of good faith when you have time tonight. I will let this go for now, but, you, but, <laughs> but should something like this happen again, the person responsible will be buying me a new one. Bro. Bro. I could never, I could never. So this is them elaborating on the toaster, the toaster event. Uh, 11, seven, Xena ignores scheduled kitchen time. My designated kitchen time was at seven and guess who was in, allowed to make an actual meal at seven because half the time you don't even make food at seven. Um, so this is Spawn kind of like complaining about not being allowed their allotted kitchen time, which is already an insane concept, but whatever. Um, the friend asked, do you also have a designated nap time? Do you think you're like five? Because what in the fuck? And then Spawn says, I did. I had to go to bed at 1230 until like July. <laughs> These fucking weirdos made their adult kid take fucking naps. This is crazy. Uh, friend says, family be like, I know you're a grown adult, but you're a, pr are a prisoner right now. Um, Spawn confirming they still pay rent. Uh, Spawn says, I also have to buy a majority of my own food. And because I don't have a job, I'm expected to do chores literally whenever they want. Um, Spawn says, or Spawn goes on to say, granted, we all split food payment equally, but they usually won't go shopping for my food because again, they're more important than me. Um, 11, 11, there was a Geiger count, a Geiger counter. So Spawn says, mom threatened to freeze my bank account. And the friend says, why? And then the friend says, I bought a Geiger, I, I bought a Geiger counter and those are expensive. And their friend says, your mom can, uh, shut, uh, <laughs> shut the fuck up. And Spawn says, every time I'm like, I'm sure my parents won't try to steal my money. And then they say something like that. So reminder, the money that Spawn is using to pay rent while living with their parents as an adult, as like a 20 year old plus fucking adult, that money is from a trust fund from their dead mom. This is their money. And they're threatening, they're threatening to freeze the bank account because the kid bought something they didn't like. What the fuck, bro? Poppy don't give a fuck about personal space on 1116. Spawn says, my mom has a habit of if I don't close the bathroom door, she, she will just walk in and grab stuff when I'm brushing my teeth or whatever. And there's enough space for that. I'm always visibly uncomfortable because she's directly behind me and in my space. And I and now I just asked her not to do that because basically, and she basically went, quote, if the door's open, I can come in whenever I want. I don't care if it makes you uncomfortable. 
then we go on to say not really anything bad but just in case uh sometimes she even like touches my back when she comes in i don't know to like signal that she's there or to make more room for herself which makes me which makes it so much worse for me all right 10 30 we have new rules for throttled internet so this is in the group chat poppy says fyi and things uh to do for spawn number one we need to schedule uh with the mrs call them now Two, you need to find a job and get up at 10 a.m. each day. Three, Discord needs to be closed by 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Focus on finding a job. Four, uh, Poppy and Zena are planning to move blank within the next year. You must be independent by then. Five, failure to abide by these will result in throttled internet paying for your own place. Or paying for your own phone. Six, uh, uh, six I am sick and I need help around the house. You have to do specific chores. I'm going to assign certain ones that are house specific, such as cleaning the kitchen, cleaning the bathroom, cleaning. Uh, we can sit down and talk about uh, these more detail in these more detail, uh, but we need movement on this stuff before May. Yeah, other people's boundaries don't fucking matter. Boundaries don't exist. So uh, again, adult child, my guys, adult fucking child, you need to be off of your phone between this time and this time. You need to be awake at this time. You need to be doing this, this, and this. And if you don't do this, I'm going to throttle your internet. This person fucking pays rent at this apartment. This is crazy. This is like the most manipulative and controlling fucking shit that I've ever seen in my entire life. Unbelievable. So Spawn says, what do I even do about this? They're going to throttle my internet. Bestie, I can't find a job if I don't have internet. I just, I asked them to hold off it until Monday. So at least we can talk about it. I don't know what to do. They're expecting me to just be solely job hunting for an entire eight hours. Um, Spawn goes on to say they just constantly hold it against me. I'm not doing chores, but they also never asked me to do them like you like you if you just fucking asked me then I would. Also, literally I've been go I haven't been able to go grocery shopping for like an entire month because they won't let me buy any fridge food or freezer food. So this again stacks on the accusation that they are restricting access to food, which we have seen around the weird scheduled mealtime fucking weird shit. And then also like not buying them groceries or not letting them buy groceries, which is fucking weird. Fucking weird. They've tried uh, cutting me off from my friends like three times in the past. Every time it caused me to spiral downward. So now they're going to be uh, isolating me. Also the hypocrisy. My mom is going to make me pay for my phone bills as a punishment. But she also doesn't want me spending my trust fund on bills. So we've got a lot about that. <clears throat> Note. Uh, 11.30 was on a Thursday. Let me pull that back up because I need my, my color palette here. So uh, Spawn says to Poppy, can you give me an until Monday before these are put in place? At least I need to figure things out to fix the sleep schedule and allow time to discuss um, because I don't agree with all of it. And then Poppy says, yes, starting Monday is fine. TBC though, uh, to be clear, this isn't about agreeing with it. It's my rules for the house and I'm willing to negotiate some, but I'm not, um, not willing to change some of these. We need to get moving on this stuff. Our lease is up in May. We need things figured out one way or another. We can talk more this week and ha uh, I have work tonight. So we're not going to negotiate on us throttling your fucking rent or throttling your internet and restricting access to food. Those are non-negotiables, guys. Um, 12 one, uh, Spawn is talking about uh, panic attacks and their hair falling out. Obviously, this is starting to really impact them. So this is uh, 1119. Sorry that you feel yelled at. And again, this is very concerning coming from somebody who is like an LPC. Like, we should have better conflict resolution skills. Uh, we should not be doing this, but... So, uh, Poppy says, I'm with clients, come get her. Spawn says, Xena just yelled at me for getting cereal because it was 11 o'clock and no one else was in the kitchen or even had, or even had left the bedroom until I was already back in the door, which is when the, where the conversation happened. Uh, Poppy says, you're supposed to be up at 10 a.m. I'm sorry you felt yelled at, but please be up on time. And then Spawn says, I still need to eat regardless. And Poppy says, yes, you need to be up in time. These are not mutually exclusive. We will talk more when I'm done with work. So, I'm sorry that you felt yelled at. Okay. 12.7, we have rules are greater than health. So we're going to read this screenshot. This is from Xena. So Spawn says, can I please get a sl get sliced cheese and jelly pizza rolls from the grocery store? I'm all out of those, which means I don't really have any food to eat other than pasta. Xena says, no, the rules are not changing. Fridge cleaning needs to be completed first. If you have any further issues, Poppy finishes work in an hour. Spawn says, the pharmacy closes at 8. I also need to grab prescriptions. I won't be able to eat until 7 because I have to go right at 7 if I have to wait for another hour. So this is, again, an example of restricting food. Like, you have to clean the fridge before we will buy you food with money that you give us to buy food. So again, Spawn pays rent, Spawn gives money for the groceries, and they are refusing to buy Spawn food if Spawn doesn't do their chores first. <sighs> Unhinged, bro. So twelve twelve parent derogatory. So the thing is, Zina just said to me, quote, I'm starting to feel like your parent and not your housemate. Um, You're dating my mom that makes you my parent by default. 
So then this is the screenshot from the conversation they had. Zena says, copy a conversation with uh, Spawn. Asked Spawn to take care of their food packaging and they left in the kitchen. They did so. I explained that they need to start picking up after themselves because I have to move their packaging multiple times over the week. I said that this was starting to feel like a parent picking up after the kid and not a housemate. I asked them to work on the skill. They responded, yes. These are your fucking parents. These are your parents. And again, if 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 you can't like just be a fucking adult. So like if I'm doing something and I have a roommate and my roommate like leaves shit out. I'm like, hey, dude, like. I moved your stuff or whatever. I threw away your trash. Can you throw it away next time? And they're like, oh yeah, sure. My bad. Cool. Conversation done. If you have to frame this as like earth shattering that somebody left their fucking trash on the counter, if that bothers you so much that there were like a handful of times that you had to throw away somebody else's trash, you belong in a padded room. You don't belong in a cohabitative living environment. When you live with other people, other people are going to just space things. Other people are going to like make a mess and maybe not clean it up. Other people are going to forget to do their chores. Other people are going to need a reminder like, dude, garbage goes out tomorrow. Can you make sure you put all your trash in the garbage can or whatever? If you can't handle that, don't live with other fucking people. Like this is all normal human behavior and acting like this is like a literal nuke that just destroyed your entire fucking week because you had to throw away a box. Come on, dude. And these are like full grown fucking adults. These are adult adults that is this person's parent and this is how they're fucking acting. Oh my God, dude. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so this is just kind of reiterating that uh, they don't feel like Spawn's parent. What does Xena have to say about this less than a month ago? So remember Xena says that I feel more like a parent than a housemate. Congratulations, you are in the role. Uh, you are in a parental role. You are dating the parent of a child that lives with you. And I shouldn't say child because this person's like 20 fucking years old, but... Anyway, so Xena says, um, finally trying again to make the house feel like ours. Set it up to meet our needs. Feel safe again. Don't get it twisted. What Poppy's adult kid and my kid too. Remember what we said earlier? I feel like a, a parent derogatory. Um, did to us was emotional abuse. So many of my keepsakes were broken over the years. Quote, I miss my mom, my ass. They weren't a weepy child. They never even said that shit in their life until the last month or so. Even when they do miss Pop or did miss Poppy, Poppy's company, they never talked like that. All they ever, all they ever to do was to ask for time and then show up for agreed upon time. Needless to say, they sucked at both of those steps. This is something that we tried to work on them with for years with a variety of different approaches, therapy skills. No matter what we did, it wasn't enough. This issue has been going on for years and is part of the foundation to their poor later behavior. By the way, Poppy has worked from home for many years now. When I say, quote, show up, I mean, go to their bedroom. Uh, go from their bedroom to the couch in the living room. That's it. And asking uh, for a time that I could be verbal. Asking for a time could be verbal or over text if it was during the workday. That's it. Again, I'm talking about an adult. And this is what Zena is referring to when they say, quote, I miss my mom. And this is Spawn saying, yeah, I miss my when my mom was nice to me. I will pause briefly to reiterate a point that I think is true and very uh, relative or relevant to reading all this. If you are someone who has an adult child and your adult child is estranged from you, I would say a good like 99% of the time that's your fucking fault. If you have an adult child that refuses to maintain a relationship with you, it's almost always because of your actions, okay? There are very few circumstances where a child refuses to have a relationship with their adult parents as an adult child if there's not some fuck shit going on. So a couple of like exceptions to the rule I could see is like, if your child is like seriously like fucking mentally ill, okay? And they don't wanna get help. That could be one thing. Uh, if your child is an addict and you have like a boundary, it's like, I'm not gonna give you money. I don't want a relationship with you as long as you continue to, you know, use substances or whatever. Fair, okay. But if we are somebody who talks shit about our adult child publicly, um, nine times out of 10, it's going to be a you problem. Nine times out of 10, it's going to be something that you did to fracture the relationship because who has control in the relationship? The parent. Even if the child is an adult, there is still that dynamic of a parent and a child. It is the parent's responsibility to make sure that that relationship is going somewhat smooth. It's not the child's job to therapize the adults. It's not the child's job to kind of micromanage the fucking relationship. Like you are the adult, you are the parent in this relationship. Even if your child is also an adult, Nine times out of 10, if you don't have a relationship with your adult child, that is a failure on your part. And reading all of these logs, I am comfortable saying the reason that they don't have a relationship is the failure on Xena and Poppy's fault. I would say that with my whole fucking chest every fucking hour of the day until the end of time. If 
you are someone who feels that you need to have a bedtime, a bedtime routine, scheduled kitchen times, written fucking orders, uh, mandatory chores. And if you don't do your chores, we're going to restrict access not only to your ability to eat food, your ability to have access to the internet that you fucking pay for. Both the food and the internet are paid for. Restrict access to appliances. Restrict access to, like, basic needs. Because why? You didn't do your chores? I would say that that is 100% their fault. That is controlling, micromanaging, like manipulative, it's abusive, it's toxic. And again, 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 they're, this is just like such a clear example of sick, twisted, demented people who take like therapy language and manipulate it and twist it to try and control other people. And again, this could be unintentional. I don't believe it. I believe that this is calculated and intentional and malicious with every delivery of the communication between the two of them. It seems intentional. It seems malicious. Um, and I would defend that to the grave. Okay, so we have ambiguous claims here. I love when my parents, when parents tell you that you have chores tonight, but they, t they don't tell you what they are or when they are. It's now 930 and you haven't been able to hang out with your friends because you're still waiting on the mysterious chores. Uh, by the way, I asked at 930, Zena said I have to wait till they could write down a list for me. It's now 10 p.m. No list. 1215, how dare you call me abusive? Me, uh, you don't actually own the right to my time. Her, I do actually, you're my child and you're in my house. 10 minutes later. Her, it's fucked up that you said that. It really hurt how much you try to make it to be abusive. 1215, guardianship and custody. Spawn says, yeah, Zena legitimately told me that if I hadn't moved up by May, I have three options, be homeless. Option I don't remember, that's also bad. And then filing guardianship custody of me. So... For people who don't know, guardianship custody of adults is basically like you just control every aspect of this person's life. You control all their finances, you control all their medical decisions, you control literally every fucking aspect of their life. This is for people that are like so mentally fucking disabled that they are not able to live an independent life and they need a guardian to take care of them into adulthood. Um, threatening to get a guardianship for your adult child that doesn't need it, mind you. Again, very intentional, very malicious. Dare I say evil? <laughs> Dare I say demented? Dare I say probably one of the most fucked up things I've ever read? Like, that would give them, like, total fucking control of everything, every aspect of Spawn's life. Fucking weird that that even crosses the mind of somebody who wants their child to be independent and successful. Even crosses the mind. Yeah, I'll just take control of fucking everything. All your money. All that shit. I'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. Weird. <clears throat> 1224 Xena stops Poppy from being nice um, Spawn says Xena imposing arbitrary rules for no reason other than to screw me over after Xena was done with the bathroom my mom was gonna let me go really quick and Xena got mad at me because qu quote it's Poppy's turn though and I kept fighting my mom on it and putting words in my mouth because clearly the interpretation of the situation is the correct one despite being told the direct opposite like Poppy already agreed to let me do this uh, this literally only affects her why are you fighting us so of course my mom caves it's now been about 15 minutes since Xena finished and I still need to go so bad because she takes forever in the bathroom just pure control pure control this is uh what how far are we on this okay we're pretty close to being on okay so one nine seven plus hours of doing chores so again context for this little bit here is of course that um the context here of course is that uh spawn has pots so standing and doing excessive exercise in the heat or whatever is not uh beneficial for their um condition so Xena over text, uh, be done with whatever you're doing by 5.20 so you can start chores. Me gets home at 5.16. Xena, you're late. You need to be on time for things. I'm sick of having to yell at you for this. Me, but you told me 5.20, it's 5.16. Xena, you can't go. But this, you made an argument, an agreement to be home by 5 verbally when I asked you right before you left. It's totally reasonable expecting to be home less than an hour when you know it takes 20 minutes there, 10 to 20 minutes, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So me, I literally, uh, me literally doing chores from noon till literally right now, so 7 o'clock at night. Uh, parents, okay, now that you're done with that list of chores, here's the next list. You're not allowed to use the computer until this is done. Uh, it's also your fault you were working that long, so you can't be mad about having to do more work, and then this is the list. So, do 1-9. So, a due date on the fucking chores. No computer, Discord, other projects until tasks are done. No exceptions for breaks. Eating breaks slash eating must be done in a timely fashion. What the fuck, bro? Again, adult. Move vacuum, front area, blah, 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 boot tray, sweep, wipe clean, putting away, 
Return list to Poppy and Xena. If tasks are not done, Spawn will wake up early the next day to complete these items and still have all of next day's chores to do. No, this is uh, this is a household chore and not time for Spawn to do their room. They must take care of their room and their personal time. Miscellaneous, taking all the trashes and replacing the bags. Like, this is literally... Literally, this is Cinderella. I was literally just going to say that. I was literally going to say this is Cinderella. I oh, my God. We're mind melting. Oh, I can feel you in my brain. This is like they literally were like, we have a fucking live in Cinderella, bro. This is crazy. This is crazy. Oh, wow. So Spawn says also every time they give me a list of chores, they add extra steps that weren't there before, like last time. And then they're confused about why it's taking me longer. Um, also, this time they sent my complaints for, quote, quit excuses. Now they're just blatantly infantilizing me instead of being subtle about it. Not even saying I won't do it. I'm just saying I'm not doing it tonight. I literally said I wanted to do it tomorrow. And they're like, I'm not comfortable with that. Well, then they don't get it done, period. So parents talked it over. These are the two fairest options. They said, one, do the entire list tonight. Two, don't do the entire list tonight. And the internet gets shut off. The kicker about option two is uh, the way they write it is that if I miss even one on the checklist, it still counts to the second option. Uh, they talk about how I'm forgetful, but guess which one of us left the stove on for several hours, and guess who used someone else's toothbrush? I'll give you a hint. It wasn't me. Hires a deep web hitman, but for myself, I am so exhausted. Yeah, like I said, I'm not an emotionally reactive person by any means, but if I was forced to live in this situation, I would probably come with something to be a game. Like, 100%. There's no fucking way. <clears throat> okay, so this is 227DID diagnosis. So, for people who don't know, Poppy has DID, apparently. Um, and Spawn thinks that they have DID. So Spawn goes to a therapist or is going to go to a therapist or whatever. This message is from Poppy. So Poppy to Spawn says, thinks we need to schedule discussion of uh, Spawn resume, discussion of plans going forward, discussion of DID diagnosis. Hey Spawn, um, we did not need to do this now, but I think that we need to talk about the DID testing. As far as I can find, I've gone through tooth and nail and I think this ID only gave you this diagnosis based on your report of eight alters. Several of the criteria for DID aren't met and none of the tests took, the tests you took for DID. Uh, they should have uh, they should have did the MID six if they were trying to determine dissociative symptoms. This is uh, not to say that you're not a system, but I don't, but I don't, but I don't but this diagnosis. I think they meant to say, but I don't buy this diagnosis. When we sit down, I can go piece by piece through uh, my reasoning. I want to repeat, this is not to invalidate you or a system, but I do not see DID. Uh, we would have to start talking about different options for independence. So. Poppy is not her kid's fucking therapist. There's a reason that you are not allowed to like practice therapizing on people who aren't your fucking clients. Um, but also like, I just, I don't understand. Like, why are you shoving, like shoehorning into this? I, this is just like an unnecessarily, it feels like unnecessarily cruel just to like shit on your kid. Like that's what it felt like to me in reading that. One says that last sentence gave me so much anxiety based on previous interactions. I feel like her believing I have DID means I'm not allowed to live on my own anymore. My therapist had no idea what I'm talking about 90% of the time. Why would she, why would she not say this? So tying into the idea that like, if, if it does come back that spawn has DID or, you know, whatever the fuck that they won't let spawn live on their own. Got to keep, got to keep Cinderella in the castle. You guys. La 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 la. 317 is just how they talk. My parents. I want to focus all your attention on getting a job. Me, hey, can you quiet down because I'm taking a time test? Xena, suck it up and deal with it. Me, it's for a job. My mom, we'll try. Also, my parents, not even a second later, go back to screaming at each other. I can't focus on the stupid test with y'all screaming at each other. And I didn't finish it. I ran out of time. Never mind. They're just screaming again. Might lose my insurance because my mom didn't give me the mail until a week after it was delivered. Xena, you can do the dishes either today or tomorrow. It's up to you. Me, later. I don't think I can do the dishes today. I'll do them tomorrow. Zena, no, you need to do them today. Okay, then why give an option? Okay. Moving on, we have daily logs. I don't know what the daily logs are, so let's find out together, shall we? So Zena says, Spawn, your daily logs are missing for almost an entire week and then some. Tonight, you need to work on filling them out to the best of your memory. Make sure that you review past instructions to include, include because they are still requirements. What you're working with skills uh, and ability is also required. Uh, if it's not completed by tonight, then there will be consequences, particularly loss of internet for the entire day tomorrow. What if they're just like making her write like or making them write like summaries on the day and lessons learned and shit like they're doing like fucking uh, Cornell notes for every fucking chore they do. Jesus Christ. Juan says, I'm sorry, I haven't been feeling well today and it was hard uh, work when the computer was broken. Zena says, you can handwrite them. They're still due tonight. The logs are missing much for the back. Uh, Spawn says I didn't have the stuff for the 21st to the 24th because my computer wasn't working and I couldn't do anything. My 25th and 26th, I spent the whole day doing chores and yesterday and today, um, barely managing to stay awake the whole day. 
Dina says, please be aware that this is not a negotiation. We are not accepting any excuses. You, enough at, you know enough at this point to communicate before you decide not to do something that is required of you. If you did, if you did not do anything towards independence on a particular day, then you write that. Also, you have lots of books in your room from the library, so it's not true that you couldn't do anything. You also have the ability to leave the house and go to the library. You still have your phone that you can use at this point. You were telling us that you couldn't do anything. It's the exact same thing as you making choices about what to do with your time. I will not be discussing this further. It's your choice what to do from here. They eventually move out. Spawn eventually moves out. But like, again, being mindful that Spawn pays rent. Spawn pays rent for this fucking place. And they have like this weird fucking, I don't know, dude. Ugh. We're almost done, guys. We're almost done. We're getting to the end, okay? So, 4-6, no bath. Never mind, no bath for me. Zena says, uh, Spawn, we need to do laundry in the bathroom tonight. We want to write up the bathroom. We want to... We don't want to type the bathroom for long periods, but please uh, use ice or rice heating pack or ibuprofen. Um, Spawn's friend said, wait, you wanted to take a bath uh, for pain to be warm? And Zena's like, no. Yeah, what a bitch. And I can't use the heating pad for my entire legs. By the way, they didn't even do laundry today. 410, not getting the internet back. Spawn says, they told me that I get my internet back on Monday morning if I got everything done. It's Monday morning and they still haven't given me back the internet. They probably forgot again. Yells, I'm reminded my mom and she says, quote, you were asked not to, to bug us about this. Bruh, you said Monday morning and I get it back and I still, I still haven't gotten it back. They're going to drag it out again just because they can. I need a house. And then we have some screenshots here. We'll read the screenshot here um in a second so who knows when i'm getting my internet back then 9 15 p.m still no internet remember how they said i would get it back monday morning it's now almost tuesday i have no idea when they're coming home so this is at midnight 12 12 a.m uh xena says update due to spawn not keeping their end of the agreement of the weekend the consequence they were supposed to complete 100 percent of the tasks assigned to them over the weekend the internet will not be turned on back turned back on yet if something is needed for a job related appointment, then uh spawn must let us know at least a day in advance so we're able to decide how to handle that also if spawn goes over their phone plan and data limit they will be responsible for paying the charges on the bill because of poor choices that spawn has not been making in regards to not completing their chores we will be discussing how to proceed and we'll need some time to think this over spawn says what did i even miss on the chore list i have double checked it twice Unbelievable, dude. Unfucking believable. So, 420 internet restriction 10 days after it was supposed to be restored. This is 15 days before Spawn leaves the house. So, this was on 410. 10 days later, Xena says, noted. Uh, Spawn says, tomorrow I have an appointment at 3.30 with my job developer, so I will need internet for that as well. I also have a job interview at 9 a.m. on Monday. Xena says, one, the internet is just fine for you and your friends. Two, you need to go to the library and use a meeting room. Xena says, we can discuss later, uh, details later then. Weird how you didn't put anything on the calendar. Spawn says, I'll put it on now. All three events have been added. Xena says, clearly you would like internet and computer usage. We are willing to approve the usage for job development in the interview. So what's your offer for us having you use it? You've lost your privileges because of repeated behaviors. So remember on this day, on this day, they said that Spawn could use the internet for like fucking job related stuff. If they, if they get it approved a day in advance, if, you know, four business days before the event. And so they're like, this day, this day, this day, I have shit I have to do for jobs. Can I please have the internet? And they're like, no, actually you misbehave. So you don't get the fucking internet. What? Ah, and then they're like, what are you willing to offer us for the internet? And then Spawn says, what would be an acceptable offer? And then Xena says, that's on you to figure out, not turn the question back on us. And Spawn says, I don't know what you want. Can you at least give me an idea? It's a super under, open under question. Like this didn't work very well for me. And then Spawn says in uh, their Discord server, I hate that when they do this, like, can I just do normal chores that they told me not to do? Also, what do they do this shit uh, to go to a job interview? I'm begging them not to play mind games with me for once. What do I do if I'm not allowed to go to a job interview? Apparently this was a test and I failed. I was so anxious thinking of anything I anything i just why are they like this i'm never good enough for them and it's so ingrained in my head that they do the, these stupid little tests uh i think nothing uh i could say would be good enough about my and i psych myself out so damn it was a test it was a fucking test so the list poppy says yeah this kid had a goal to show up with a three-page single space list of things they were upset about Half of them were just dishonest and half of them were just partial framings and ignore the context. To be clear, I am not a perfect parent. I was young and abusive and shitty when they were young and dealing with the grief of their mom dying and show some really awful people, uh, and show some really awful people to bring around them. But I spent 15 years in therapy, Zen trying to make up for that shit, only watched them try to become a wedge between myself and my fucking fiance. So now we're alleging that the kid is a wedge between Poppy and Zena. 
it's the kid that's destroying their relationship. It's not the weird boundaries that they're putting on the kid, the weird expectations, the insane amount of control, the insane part of my, uh, uh, amount of micromanaging in scheduling their life to the fucking minute, restricting internet that they pay for, restricting food that they pay for, restricting times that they can be in their fucking apartment, making them do Cinderella-esque like fucking chore schedules every single fucking day. That's not what drove a wedge. That's not what did it. It's the kid. The kid's destroying their relationship. So here are a list of the allegedly dishonest needs and concerns copied verbatim. Bathroom rules. I have to ask before showering. You guys never asked me before showering. Reserved bathroom times for me aren't respected. I have to hold, hold it when I wake up and late in the evening, even when that's the time that I need it most. If I ask whether or not you need to go to the bathroom or shower and you say you need the bathroom, please one, actually get up and use the bathroom right away. Two, let me know when you are done. Kitchen, not respecting my kitchen times. You cook late and this cuts into my dish time, forcing uh, dishes to run later, sometimes even cutting into the times I'm supposed to be asleep. Sometimes you take up my designated food time. If I miss food times, I'm not allowed to get food until y'all are done in the kitchen, which isn't good for health reasons. And isn't good in general. Like, that's fucked up. You can't just tell somebody they can't come and get something to eat in a fucking apartment they pay rent for. Uh, shouldn't have to keep my snacks in a separate room, especially if that's a room I'm not supposed to go in between uh, certain hours of the day. How am I supposed to be snacking throughout the day for my health? But I can't if I'm barred from it. This also applies to my sports drinks. I need those throughout the day. I have a disorder that requires a large amount of salt to be taken regularly. We should all have equal access to parts of the house, especially parts of the house that facilitate bodily functions like the bathroom and the kitchen. I wouldn't ask for equal access to the living room, but I should be able to go into the kitchen and the bathroom whenever I need if someone isn't using it. That's like the bare minimum. Like on Maslow's hierarchy of needs of living in Poppy and Zena's hell horror house with the clown music music playing 24 seven, like the bottom of the Maslow hierarchy is like being able to enter the bathroom or enter the kitchen as you please. Like, holy fuck, dude. Holy fuck, dude. I would just start pissing on the floor like a dog. I'd be like, well, you wouldn't let me use the fucking bathroom. Start chewing on the molding, like rip the molding off and like eat the molding, like chew on the fucking blinds and shit and be like, sorry, I was hungry. Like I would be, I would be a domestic terrorist. Like I, I would, I, there's no way. There is no way that I would just like eat that and move on. Like me personally, you know, I obviously didn't grow up with these people as my parents. So I, would, I wouldn't I would be like conditioned to, you know, I wouldn't have been like manipulated into being passive, you know, but like hypothetically, if tomorrow I woke up and I was Poppy and Zena's roommate, holy shit, bro. Oh my God. <sighs> Somebody have 911 on the phone, okay? Because shit's gonna get real, real fucking quick. Like you're gonna tell me, there's designated times to use the bathroom. There's designated times that I can use the bathroom in an apartment that I would be paying rent in? Electric chair. Absolutely the fuck not. Crazy, bro. Crazy. Okay, let's finish up. Chores. Oh, I shouldn't be pushed to complete tasks that require one of you to do something first. Moving your stuff, vacuum the couch, blah, blah, blah. True, especially if they're like, don't touch my shit. It's like, okay, if you want me to vacuum the couch, take your shit off the couch or I'm going to move it and vacuum the fucking couch. Um, you need to understand that I am an adult who can manage my time and I complete chores without strict deadlines. I know they need to be completed. True, dude. If you're 24 years old and you need a chore wheel, uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, especially if somebody that you're living with, like, makes the chore wheel for you, I would rip that shit up. I would fucking tear it apart like a fucking pit bull going to fucking town on a toddler. I'd be like, Arr! just like rip that shit up. Absolutely not. That, you know, where you can put that chore wheel right up your fucking ass. That's where it's going. Okay. Don't you dare bring out the chore wheel. During fucking family meeting time every week. <laughs> um, okay, sorry. <clears throat> Not making immediate requests. Task switching is very hard. Um, warn me, preferably 24 hours before signing me big tasks. That's totally fair. I need you to like deep clean the entire house. Okay, will you let me know when you need me to do that by so I can kind of like move my shit around? Cool. Um, if I have to stick to my chores on a strict schedule or risk getting either guilted, or my computer privileges taken away, you also have to stick to your chores, namely dishes. Fair. If you're not washing dishes, why the fuck should I wash dishes? Okay? Unless we have, like, an agreement. I don't clean the bathroom. My wife cleans the bathroom. I clean the kitchen. The kitchen is my area to clean. We have we have an agreed upon, you know, a mutual agree agreement here. Okay? But if she's not cleaning the bathroom, I'm not cleaning the fucking kitchen. Why am I going to do my chores if you don't have to do yours? Okay? Welcome to fucking egalitarianism 101. Okay? Welcome to the socialist commune of your fucking dreams, bro. Get in there with the steam cleaner if you want me to start washing the dishes, okay? Tit for tat. Let's go. Oh, la, la. <clears throat> New things get added to my... Oh, hang on. If I have to stick to do my, doing my chores on a certain schedule... Uh, wait, read that one. Okay. On that note, getting privileges taken is weird for a 22-year-old. Extremely weird, especially for a 22-year-old that pays rent. If I pay rent, you don't get to tell me what the fuck to do or where the fuck I'm allowed to go. 
No Chick-fil-A sauce? Jesus Christ. Uh, new things added to my chore list without warning, permission, or compensation, making them increasingly longer. Then I'm reprimanded for not doing the extra parts uh, in a later week because I wasn't. it wasn't made clear that this was meant to be a permanent addition to the chore list. Sometimes I'm asked to do your dishes for you, pretty much forced into it because you guys, you guys didn't do your chores. I need you to stick to your dish days as well. Sometimes dishes aren't done for four days straight and giving me all the dishes to do at once. Not giving me instructions over text, even though I've asked numerous times. It's completely unreasonable for one person to do four where, four days worth of dishes in one night, especially if those dishes are meant to be someone else's responsibility. Also, correct me if I'm wrong, when we were reading this, they have a dishwasher. Like, how you just rinse it off and put it in the fucking dishwasher. No? Is there a reason that this person has to do four days worth of fucking dishes because everybody else is too stupid to, like, rinse off the fucking dish and put it in the dishwasher? I'm Amish. I hand wash all of my fucking dishes because I don't believe in that devil technology. But like, goddamn, when you have a dishwasher, literally all you do is fucking rinse it off and put it in the dishwasher. And then if you put dishes in and the dishwasher's full, you just stick the pot in there and close it and run it. Like, what are you talking about? Why would there be four days worth of dishes? What the fuck? Is everybody you're living with like an ant? What's going on? Oh my god. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's see. It's completely unreasonable to expect someone to do four days worth of dishes. Okay, we read that all along. Uh, if this isn't uh, stuck to you, I will just buy bins for each day of the week and put my dishes in there. This is not something I'm willing to compromise on, especially with how exhausting and draining dishes are for me. The bin system could also mean that whatever's in those bins has to get done by the day, that they just be done by the person assigned to the day. Um, sleeping, strict bedtimes, and wake-ups are something that's primarily for children, not a 22-year-old adult, adult, true. Um, also, they have fucked up sleeping schedules where they're like nocturnal, essentially. So, of course, your fucking circadian rhythm is super fucked up. You're not supposed to be nocturnal. It's not good for your body to be nocturnal. You are supposed to sleep when it's dark out and be awake when it's light out. It's not good for you to wake up at like 2 o'clock in the fucking afternoon and stay up until 4 o'clock in the fucking morning. That's not good for your body, okay? Jesus. Uh, not warning me I have to get up early until right until... Right until right as I'm doing my bedtime routine on weekends is really upsetting as it interrupts uh, my planning and autism... You're an adult that pays rent in an apartment and they have a wake-up time for you on the fucking weekends? Clinically insane, bro. Clinically insane, bro. Like, you have to be up at this time. Excuse me? No the fuck I don't. What? Oftentimes, you cut into my bedtime routine. You should at least try to use the bathroom before then. When you cook really late, it pushes my dishes to late. It forces me uh, to have to do my bedtime routine really late and I'm expected to go to bed after. Uh, I need at least an hour of fun time directly before bed or I'll be depressed. Like... You shouldn't have to, you shouldn't have to fucking explain yourself. You're fucking 22 years old. You pay rent to live in this fucking apartment. You shouldn't have to like, you shouldn't have to send this to somebody that you live with to justify why you're not a fucking slave and you're not like a fucking Tamagotchi that has to have a fucking feeding schedule. Okay. God damn. Emotional respect and health. Not letting me have an excessive large backup supply of sports drinks when I'm disabled. So I need an excessive amount of salt in my body. Not good for me. Um, it's extremely hot outside and I can't keep up with the chores because I have a disorder that makes me faint during the heat. Um, when you're upset with me, uh... When you are upset with me, you need to learn how to treat me with respect and like I'm an adult. Treat me how I want to be treated. If you're upset with me, tell me after you've cooled down because you both have a tendency to snap at me when you're upset. Fair. Uh, you treat me like my forgetful forgetfulness is a horrible crime or that I've done it on purpose and I'm using it as an excuse. Um, Xena especially treats me like I'm in the way or a nuisance whenever I leave my room. Xena regularly trying to keep me from interacting with a dog, question mark. That's fucking weird. Um, using a singular action or one time of occurrence as a gauge for how I'll act for the rest of time. Deemed to be someone who is dangerous for unsafe practices that I didn't know were a problem. For example, using the cast iron or burning the edge of a satin seal or pretty much anything to do with my room and the dog. The cast iron I didn't know about. The satin I've done several times and never... So they won't even... They're like, oh my god, you can't use a knife. You're going to kill yourself. Like, what is this, bro? Anytime my room has anything on the floor, it's deemed unsafe for the dog to be in there, even though most of the time it's just clothes. What? If I mention a topic that makes... If, if I... If... I mentioned a topic that makes me feel uncomfortable. Don't bring it up around me and don't make jokes about it. If you can't remember, then keep a list somewhere. That's fair. If they have like their fucking 27 page manifesto corkboard drawstring fucking chore list of every minute of this kid's life being fucking like an itinerary for a Disneyland trip, I think it's fair that they have a list of things like to be sensitive about talking to, to spawn about like if it's a topic that's upsetting, especially when they're like talking about like pedophilia and shit. Like it's fair to be like, hey, could you not bring that up around me? That's a super fair request. Um, every part of my day has strict bedline, deadlines and it feels suffocating. I have to ask before spending my own money that I earned. I shouldn't have to have, ask for permission. That's fucking crazy. This is financial abuse. True. Uh, you have to talk to me like I can't be independent or self-sufficient. Never included uh, in my meals that I always have to beg to be included. Anytime it's something like I get it with food, but I don't enjoy. But if it's something that I'd like to eat, I'd like to be considered. Zena randomly asked me to do research on topics and provide citations. 
What? For what? Research for what? Chores? God. Uh, house agreements are to be used as a tool to shut down disagreements and conversations when I argue about them, but actually following them doesn't seem to be important for anybody who isn't me. Example, we still have a rule that pots and pans should be washed immediately after use, but I'm the only person who's actually done it. I'm the only one expected to do their dishes on time. Yeah, this shit would not fly with me at all, dude. If you have an expectation for me, but you don't hold yourself to that expectation, absolutely not. If we have an agreed upon rule that um, if you fill up the dishwasher, you know, and y the dishwasher is full, the last person to put the last dish in has to run the dishwasher. That's fair. If I go to put my dish in the dishwasher and the dishwasher is full and nobody's run it, I'm gonna be like, all right, well, fuck you, bro. You can run the dishwasher, whatever. Like that, I don't understand. And even if that was my issue, first of all, I wouldn't care. I'm a fucking adult. I'm not a six-year-old. I'm not vindictive. I'm not spiteful. I'd be like, oh, so-and-so just forgot to run the dishwasher or whatever. I'd pop the pot in and run the dishwasher and be like, yo, so-and-so when it's done, can you put the dishes away? You just forgot to run it. I don't need to write like a 30 page fucking email and a checklist of expectations and be like, if you don't behave, you are going to lose access to the fucking dishwasher, adult roommate. What the fuck is this? This is, I'm like gnawing at the bars of my enclosure. This is like insane, dude. Ah! Okay. Um, uh, agreements can be changed later on. Blah, blah, blah. You guys ask me for help a lot and it's almost never a request. It's always a demand. Having a rule that requires me to help isn't what help is it's a job especially because when i ask for help i almost never given i don't ask for it very often but uh i'd like the request to be valued and at least followed sometimes so very last little part <clears throat> and then we're done and it says it instructs us to come to our own conclusion so we'll do that in a minute okay <clears throat> last part of this list that spawn sent before leaving the home after this i want to move out because you guys infantilize me and ex exude an excessive amount of control over my life you treat me like I'm incapable of taking care of myself, but I already take care of myself. I do all of the housework. I make all my own food. I've been successful in school and I have kept up with jobs when I was working. I know how to take care of myself and how to take care of a household. I know multiple people around my age with the same or worse mental health state as me or the same disabilities as me who are living independently and doing well. The only steps that are missing from my independence are driving and knowing how to rent, how rent and taxes work. I don't want to stay in this house if the things on the above list are not changed. Conclusion, come to your own. So, that was a lot to chew on. That was a lot to digest, obviously. I think in reading all of this, it is very evident to me that Xena and Poppy are incredibly controlling, incredibly manipulative, and weaponize their kind of experience or expertise as mental health professionals. And they use that language to control, manipulate, gaslight, this person like this is a 24 year old who is your child that is not your like biological child that you took guardianship of lives with you and your partner and you and your partner treat this kid like fucking cinderella that is incapable of doing anything without a detailed itinerary and list there are times that this person is not allowed in areas of the house necessary areas of the house i might add you like the kitchen, like the bathroom, like this is so clearly controlling, so clearly manipulative, so clearly abusive, especially financially abusive, but also abusive abusive because we're restricting utilities that this person pays for and we're restricting access to like necessary parts of the environment, like a bathroom, like a kitchen, not allowing them to eat, not buying them groceries. I just, I have no words other than like, this is intentional, this is malicious, and this is fucking evil, okay? This is demonic activity, okay? This is, like, pure demon shit for you to treat another human being. Never mind your fucking kid, your adult kid like this. For what? So you have somebody to wash your fucking dishes? So you have a little live-in fucking Cinderella slave? Unreal, dude. Unreal. I cannot believe that people like this exist and are real human beings and have actual control over other people. I can't fucking believe it. I pray heavily for the well-being of this kid. This kid's going to be fucked up for a long time because of this shit. Like the, psycho like the psychic damage that you're inflicting on somebody because you're like, sorry, you can't go to the bathroom. It's not your bathroom time. Unreal, dude. Unfucking real. These people are demons. These people are fucking demonic.